Hello guys, this is Vice. So the Japanese uh, PM, in fact ex-PM, Shinzo Abe being shot dead by this person which you see on screen. This is the news, and in fact a shocking news which is there across the uh, world now. Entire world leaders are tweeting about it and the uh, investigators are researching on like what happened, why is this being done, the political motive or any personal motive. So this is being investigated and uh, he was actually in a public gathering because in uh, this coming Sunday their upper house elections are going to happen and about that he was uh, giving uh, or addressing the people. Okay, So a lady uh, told the news channel that uh, two gunshots were there. The first uh, shot sounded like a toy and uh, they did not even understand what happened but the second one had uh, a large bang a spark and smoke uh, was also seen and he collapsed and then uh, people were giving cardiac massage to him and he was airlifted from there and being taken to the hospital but uh, the uh, bullet hit his heart and because of uh, ex uh, uh, bleeding he has uh, passed away okay so you can see uh, 1954 september so this coming september he would have turned i think 68 years old and uh, he is now uh, no more so the world leaders shocked at the shooting of former japanese pm and uh, you can see this news, the city is uh, Japan's Nara city. So their Sunday's uh, polling is going to happen for the upper house of the parliament. And uh, he was shot in the heart, leading to failure. He was airlifted and uh, taken to the hospital. But uh, before that, I think he was brought dead to the hospital. Okay, so his, uh, uh, you see, chest was uh, like he was collapsed and shirt smeared with blood. So India also, because he's a very important uh, friend, you can tell of India. That's what uh, Modi also tweeted. So he's the longest serving prime minister of Japan also. So we have been having a long relationship with him. And uh, we had economic ties, uh, defense ties and everything. You know, the quad grouping also, it was his idea. And then we have developed it to a very important grouping against China. So it's a very uh, sad day. So tomorrow will be a national morning day will be observed. National morning, you would have heard already when uh, our uh, chief ministers, prime ministers or any sports personalities, uh, the latest, I think, uh, Lata Mangeshkar when she died and all, we had this uh, national morning uh, event. Okay, so the flag will be half uh, 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 mastered that day, half hoisted. So uh, th some rules are there. You can just pause and read this because uh, this video is not about this. So you can see the even though it is half, first it will be taken to the highest point, the peak, and then it will be put to half. And uh, evening when it is uh, lowered, that time also one time it is taken to the peak and then only lowered so such some steps are there and these instructions are given by ministry of home affairs okay this is just for the exam sake i'm telling you so same like uh, national morning there is a state morning also where uh, no ceremonial functions will be done and if no if it's an indian you know uh, the uh, mortals will be uh, draped in tricolor and uh, there will be a gun salute so there are several things so tomorrow also maybe some things will happen because we are honoring the uh, demise of uh, japanese pm okay so modi has also shared the latest photo in which they met uh, each other at tokyo uh, for a meeting so that also is shared and he was in fact the first person first world leader to tweet when the gunshot actually happened meaning even before the death news came he was the one who told like uh, prayers with him and speedy recovery and all those things he was the one who first tweeted okay after that only the australian pm the uk pm everybody uh, tweeted so he was not breathing his heart stopped while being airlifted and uh, that is how his life ended now who shot the uh, person though so he is yamagami tetsuya 41 years old a former uh, navy person you can tell maritime self-defense member of japan so he uh, opened fired at abe 67 years old with a homemade gun okay so that is what you have to know that in japan it's very very difficult to get a gun okay but this person managed to make a homemade gun you can see this photo i can zoom in and show you this is like two plastic pipes kind of thing connected and he made his own gun okay japan you know there is uh, technology and people are aware of various things okay and with internet help you can make anything now okay explosives or uh, any equipments so even 3d printed guns are coming in usa and all it's a very uh, dangerous thing for the future so this person was uh, arrested by the uh, security officials and his home was checked and found that uh, there is explosives also found at his home so he was planning uh, certain things and he whether it's a political reason or a personal reason it is still to come out but uh, in general, uh, many, many Japanese uh, people are unhappy with various things. Okay, we know Japan as a rich country, an economic developed country. They are giving loans to everyone. They are uh, building projects, infrastructure, uh, Olympics. They were uh, like hosting Tokyo Olympics. So we overall see it like a very happy country. But in, even though in the indexes and all, they are in the top 50, 60 ranks of uh, happiness index. People are miserable there. People are unhappy because of long working hours or the political economic reforms, population decline. They don't even have much population, young age population now that we, even Indians are being uh, recruited there okay young indians they need so that they have pop enough population to work and do their job so they had lot of other crisis internal crisis which we are not aware of so certain such things okay only when such disaster happens uh, people talk about this okay so there are many other things which you see which you don't see directly okay so now as i told japan has one of the strictest gun control laws in any country okay japan was in fact the first country i think to bring uh, such a uh, gun control uh, law and all 
and it was very shocking okay 13 crore population only they have around one tenth of what we have so they're getting an assault rifle is very very difficult there is a like how we get passport here like that they have to go through certain checks then police inspe inspection then some recommendation from some rifle association there are various various things to get a single gun okay so in such a place they have developed their own gun and this person has went and shot the uh, prime minister okay so here if you see gun violence is extremely rare in japan in usa if you take the statistics 2014 nearly 34000 uh, us people died uh, through gun shots but in uh, japan it's just six uh, death okay six incident of uh, gun death in japan so that much rare and that is why the security or nobody expected that such a kind of thing will happen in a country okay so our s jay shankar the uh, congress president sonia gandhi rahul gandhi venkaiah naidu amit shah kejriwal everybody has been tweeting this is just indian names i'm showing you but across the world everybody are tweeting it including donald trump everyone okay because they all were together in this uh, quad uh, formation okay so Shinzo Abe, I'll just show two slides about him. So he served as the Prime Minister of Japan from 2006 to 2007 and again from 2012 to 2020. Okay, so he was the longest serving Prime Minister in Japan's history and he served as the President of this party, okay, Liberal Democratic Party, okay, from 2012 to 2020. So some details about him, he was born in Tokyo and he served as Japan's Foreign Minister and his, his father, okay, his father served as Japan's Foreign Minister, his grandfather was a former Prime Minister, so he is from a political family and initially he completed his degree in this uh, Tokyo University, Seike University, and then also in USA. And after that, in uh, 1979, he started working in a steel company also, which he immediately quit also. 1982, he quit it and then uh, he got new positions in the foreign ministry okay of the same party only obviously and then later in 1993 he was elected as the first time as a legislator okay so he's slowly slowly getting into politics after his uh, studies and then uh, 1991 his father died 2005 he appointed he was appointed as the cabinet uh, secretary a high position and then uh, same year 2006 you can tell he was the uh, Japan's Prime Minister. Okay, but uh, and he started doing a lot of reforms also, you know, North Korea never likes uh, people getting interaction with South Korea and all. Same like China don't like uh, interacting with uh, uh, Taiwan. So same like that, uh, he started uh, engaging with South Korea and then he angered uh, China, he angered North Korea. He was having a very, uh, that kind of his own politics, you can tell. So he, uh, after that, uh, the party lost it even though he won the party was facing defeats and then finally he had to resign within one year also and he had health issues also okay so health issue because he has a disease this one if you see ulcerative colitis this i will show you at the last it's actually uh, the intestine and stomach and digestion issues so that uh, disease he had and uh, he was uh, under medication okay so everybody thought through medication he will get cured and 2012 he again became the elected ldp president okay so this time he became for next eight years and this is the longest serving of any japan prime minister okay and 2013, he launched something called Abinomics. This even we have taught you when teaching economics from Ramesh Singh textbook. Abinomics is mentioned in your Ramesh Singh textbook. Same like here, we have this now Modinomics uh, kind of concept that is actually uh, uh, copied from this only. Okay, meaning the naming is copied from this only. So this, uh, he had a lot of uh, reforms, uh, structures and with Japan, he had uh, his problems also and this uh, relationship also. And he was a very powerful uh, leader. Okay. Like we have Russia's uh, Putin or we have India's Modi or uh, Israel's uh, Netanyahu. Everywhere there will be a very powerful leader who is noted for very some extra uh, kind of reforms. Okay, so he is one of that kind of leader. Okay, and then uh, if you see 2014 to 20, he's re-elected two additional terms. And uh, even with uh, Donald Trump, he had a very uh, close relationship. Okay, even friendly. Okay, not only political, friendly personal relationship also was there. If you see Mo with Modi also, he had come to Gujarat and then that uh, Sabar Mati River front, they had spent a lot of time. Lot of exchanges have been there personally also. Okay. Okay, so his disease came up again in 2020 when he stepped down from the uh, position and then uh, next PM came in. And But even after going out of office, you see he is addressing people, he is going and participating for the party. And then uh, even as I told, China, Taiwan related also, he started commenting on such things. And uh, military adventure would lead to economic suicide. These kind of things, Japan warned China. Okay, so he was, uh, meaning he warned China. Okay, so that is why he was very uh, sound and very politically sound across uh, his timeline even uh, till uh, today july 8 2022 he was shot and uh this happened okay and for india you know australia india japan and the usa the quad grouping is the biggest contribution by him and this we are taking it forward to counter china okay now about his disease also this is something like this ulcerative colitis if you see the intestine colon bowel uh, digestion problem will come and then uh, when this comes okay then you will not be able to eat any spicy foods or dairy products or any any that kind of thing so digestion related problem mainly so this anyway he was having a very serious disease but uh, sh uh, gunshot death and all all of a sudden is a very shocking thing and it's very uh, sad that uh, India has lost a very uh, dear friend. You can see this photo from Gujarat. This is a quad grouping. This is again a G20 summit where the quad leaders are together. Again, this one, quad, uh, recent 
one so this is a very big loss to india and the entire world okay so this was the maximum details i could give you now if you are a very serious aspirant please uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, whatsapp me because the batch one of 2023 prelims plus mains test series is closing this week okay so please whatsapp me i hope uh, this video is informative please uh, give your comments also whatever you feel because without your comments we cannot take it forward so thank you and have a nice day